NCS Library. My name's Kyle, and I aim to help you prepare for the private pilot checkride for free in just five minutes a day. Today, I'm going to show you two ways to determine crosswind components. By using that crosswind component chart we've all seen, and a much easier, more precise method using your phone's calculator. I'll timestamp both sections in the description, as well as a third section where I explain the validity of the calculator method. We'll first use the chart. Let's use real winds for this example. Here in Savannah, Tennessee, the winds are 230 at 10 gusting 17 knots. Next, we should determine what runway we'd like to use. The easiest way to do this is typically just to pick the runway heading nearest the wind heading. We've got runways 01 and 19 are available here at Savannah. 010 is about 140 degrees from 230, leaving us with a tailwind, while 190 is only a 40 degree difference from 230. Let's plan to use runway 19 for takeoff and landing today. So far, we've determined that we have 10 knot sustained winds with gust up to 17 knots, all blasting at us from a 40 degree angle. Looking at our wind chart now, let's head all the way to the left and begin with our 10 knot value to find our sustained headwind and crosswind components. Travel along that 10 knot arc until you reach the 40 degree line here. Once you've arrived at that point, create a right angle from there and we can look left for our headwind component of we'll say 8 knots, and then look down for our crosswind component of maybe 7 here. Do the same thing with the max gust of 17 knots following the same curve until the 40 degree mark, and we are left with our headwind and crosswind components of 14 and 12 knots respectively. I have found this method extremely inconvenient while in the aircraft because these lines are so tiny and hard to follow while in a bouncing aircraft. Let's do the same calculation again now, but with our always available and much more accurate cell phone calculator. I promise this method's insanely easy. If you've got an iPhone, open the calculator app. Then, flip your phone sideways, and before you go using your phone like this in public, you're going to want to make sure there's no girls nearby who might mistakenly think you're playing Clash of Clans rather than doing badass pilot stuff. Next, make sure that you do not see RAD in this top left corner over here. It just means that you're in radian mode, and you'll need to tap this degree button in the lower left corner to return to degree mode. If you ever forget which mode you need to be in, just remember that wind is reported in degrees, not radians. Now, once that RAD no longer appears in the top left corner, we'll follow three simple steps to find our crosswind or headwind component. Step 1. Input the wind angle, in this case 40 degrees. Step 2. Press sine or SIN if finding crosswind and cosine or COS if finding headwind. And step three, multiply that value by our wind speed, either 10 or 17 knots in this case. Now, let's put this formula into action. Step one, input our wind angle of 40. Step two, press sine to find crosswind. Step three, take this big decimal and multiply it by our sustained wind speed of 10. That's it. We're left with our sustained crosswind component of 6.4 knots. You can just say 6 if you want to. To find headwind, we'll input our wind angle of 40 again, press cosine this time, multiply by our sustained wind speed of 10 again, and we found our sustained headwind component of 7.6 or roughly 8 knots once we're done rounding. Repeat these steps, plugging in 17 instead of 10 in step 3, and you found your gusting crosswind and headwind components of 10.9 and 13 knots respectively. Easy peasy, young thug, and sea breezy. Once you've found all your headwind and crosswind components, these values should be gauged along with the pilot's personal minimums and the aircraft's limitations to determine if they'd allow for safe takeoff or landing. Now, let's take a moment to prove this whole formula so you can use it confidently up there. This whole thing is based on that Sokotoa principle we all learned somewhere around the 7th grade and thought we'd never use again. Don't worry, we won't go that in depth here. Instead, we can build a triangle representing the winds we found earlier in the video. The reported wind from 230 based on Savannah's METAR, our takeoff heading of 190 based on the runway we've selected at Savannah, and the expected crosswind component. Remember Pythagorean's theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared? We can use it along with our triangle to demonstrate the magnitude and direction of forces. Those forces being our previously found crosswind of 6 knots, which we can plug into our A value, a headwind of 8 knots for our B spot, and our 10 knot winds reported in Savannah's METAR, which will go into our C value. Let's go ahead and extend these values back out to the third decimal point, which will provide us with a more accurate answer at the end of all of this. If we follow along with Pythagorean's theorem and take A squared, or 41.3, and add that to B squared, or 58.7, 
we see that we're left with c squared, or 100. It checks out. Try it out for yourself. Calculate the winds near you using sine and cosine, and afterwards, use Pythagorean's theorem to prove the values are correct. You can even compare it to the paper chart if you're still skeptical. 100% of the time, it works. Every time. This concludes today's video over determining crosswind components. I hope after watching, you'll be able to spend less time focused on tiny paper charts and more time focused on nailing that landing. As always, thank you so much for checking out the ACS library. If you've learned something from today's video, I hope that you might like or share it. If you're interested in seeing more, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to the right of that to enable notifications. Questions and feedback are always welcome in the comments section. Thanks again and safe flying.